Supernatural Season 12, Episode 16, Ladies Drink Free. I really enjoyed this episode. Not only do we get to see Claire come back, which is cool, just as one of our recurring characters. Um, also, the craziness that she goes through in this episode is pretty cool. But we see Sam and Dean actually take on uh, Mick Davies, which every time I say his name, I literally think of McDonald's because he says his name like Mick Davies, and he says it so fast, I just think it's like MC Davies. But Mick Davies, he goes on a mission to kind of train with them and to kind of eliminate this threat. And they did some good stuff in this episode. First off, they did some really funny stuff. I think Dean had some of the funniest just blank stares he's ever had in the show. And honestly, he had the most, he had to have had the most blank stares in this episode than he has any in the rest of the series. Because there are about at least four times I can think of where he either looked at Sam, he looked at Mick, or he was looking at them both. Or just looking at somebody, and he was just angry, and it was funny. Like, he looked at the one guy because uh, the guy mentioned how hot Claire was, and he just stared at him, and he was mad. He looked at Sam early on in the episode. I totally forgot what it was. I think it was, like, the Hogwarts line, and um, Sam was, like, kind of proud of himself. And he looked over, and Dean was just like, what are you doing? And then he, there were a couple of times I think he looked at Mick. So he had a lot of hilarious just blank stares in this episode where he was either mad or... It was, it was all mad, but he either looked mad or he was just like that blank stare. So that was really funny, uh, seeing him do that the whole episode. They did some. They did one thing that admittedly has me super worried, um, and it was when they're in the car. And Sam and Dean, and I knew this was going to happen, I think we all knew that this would happen at some point. And it was getting a little close to the truth about what the British Middle Letters have been doing behind Sam and Dean's back. Now, of course, it doesn't go through the entire concept of, oh, well, when you guys do that, we just go behind you and kill those people. But it kind of got to that point. And they mentioned, like, yeah, there was this girl who had psychic abilities and she killed people, but it was because she was being tortured and she didn't even realize what was truly happening. So we gave her a second chance. And so then, of course, they go to Mick and he's like, well, we kind of eliminate threats because monsters don't just stop being monsters and so of course they show what happened with Tetch and how he actually killed that girl. And then they did something, and this is the part that uh, kind of freaked me out, they specifically mentioned Garth by name. Because at first they were like, oh we have a werewolf friend who, you know, he's good and he goes and he eats just like animal meat and stuff and that's it. And I was like, okay, they referenced that, that's not great, but you know, that's Eh, he's kind of off the reservation anyway, so I don't think they can really find him. And then they specifically mentioned him by name, and they're like, yeah, Garth is cool. And I was like, crap, I'm super worried about that. Because I, I read that comment before where people were worried that that might happen. And I was like, you know, he's been away for a while. It's, it's simple that they could keep him out of it. And then they mentioned him specifically by name. And I, it could mean nothing, but it really worried me. And I was just like, man, I do not want to see them kill Garth. As little as he shows up in this series... I still don't want to see him go. He's just that silly guy, and I don't want to see them, you know, see them actually kill this character off, especially if it's, you know, from the British Men of Letters. It's not like just some random crazy wolf pack comes in and it's a crazy wolf war. It's just the British Men of Letters found him, and they were like, yeah, we decided to kill him because we knew who he was. I hope that doesn't end up happening because of this just vaguely being mentioned, but don't be surprised if that ends up happening, or at least they try to kill him. I would love it if they failed. And Sam and Dean ended up saving him and his family, but I don't know. I don't know if Garth is going to make it out of this season, and now that they've mentioned him specifically by name. So that had me a little worried when that scene came up, because I was just like, that, that was the one thing I was hoping for, because I'm like, yeah, Garth is out there, but don't talk about him. They don't know about him. And then they mentioned him, and then they mentioned him by name. So it has me a little bit worried that we are going to end up seeing him in this season. Um, if the British Men of Letters do end up continuing on into the next season, then I, it's almost even more likely that we'd see Garth next season if they haven't already, you know, if they didn't already plan to have him in this season. So we kind of just have to wait and see for that. But as soon as it came up, it was just one of those things where knowing what the mental letters do and how we already knew that that was going to be an important factor once, you know, Sam, Dean, and Mary do end up finding out the fact that they referenced a character they knew that could easily be a line in the sand for them, that just makes it you know, that much more likely that he will actually show up and it'll, you know, be a bit of an issue for Sam and Dean and Mary to try to save Garth and his family. So, wanted to mention that. It, it, I'm sure nobody missed it because, of course, we knew, you know, the mental letters and then they mentioned their friend by name. Excuse me. Just had me a little worried. So, we'll see what happens there. I hope he's fine in the future, but 
admittedly just a little worried. So we go through the rest of the episode, and it's pretty good. Like I said, pretty funny. Uh, they go through. Davies isn't really that great as far as um, getting along with Sam and Dean. It starts off simple. You know, they try to hold him back. It's like, you know, talking to a mother or talking to any grieving family member is a bit more difficult than you might expect. They go in. They kind of fail. He goes in as the doctor, and he's able to get the information. Of course, he lies and says that the girl was not bit. And so when he goes in, he gets scratched, and he actually ends up killing this girl, and she just dies in front of him. And after that, when they find out what happened, things start to get a little chaotic. And of course, they don't trust him. And then we also have Claire, who's just hunting on her own and, you know, lying to Jody, and we'll see what happens with that, and, you know, once she comes back. But I love what they did with Claire in this episode, once she actually got bit. I think it was really good. And I, and I like her character in general. I'm kind of hoping that we end up going back, because um, they showed it, you know, because they were doing the recap. I was like, man, when the F are they going to get back to the, uh, like, those angels thing? Because that was, before she went to Jody, that was the episode she had, was when she fought that angel from, like, that specific ward of angels who had, like, those blades and stuff. And I was like, man, when are we going to get to that, that storyline? Like, I've been waiting for that ever since they introduced it last year. And I'm just like, man, I hope they do that soon. They may have been... Man, was that the year before last? That may have been the year before last. I can't remember if the last time we saw it was this season, but I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure that was early this season and not last season, but I can't really remember. That may have been two years ago when that happened, but either way, I'm still waiting for her to be involved in that storyline where they bring those angels back with swords and stuff, because I'm like, that's that's such a cool brand to do for angels, so I'm still looking forward to that line in the future. But for this one, it was just hunting on her own, and... You know, she ends up in an argument uh, with Sam, and she, so she kind of takes off. She ends up being attacked by the werewolf, uh, who is a pure blood. They don't really go too much into that, just the fact that that's how he's able to get the girls at random. So she ends up uh, going through the transformation, and they have to find this guy. Have a great fight scene uh, at the end of the episode, which I, I just really love the ending fight scene. Of course, Sam and Dean go to try to get the guy. It ends up being the wrong dude, although my girlfriend loved the fact that Dean punched the guy, the guy straight in the face like that. So they end up finding the wrong person, and then Davies and Claire end up being ambushed by the werewolf, knock Davies out, take Claire. And so he's trying to force her to eat, and he mentions, you know, the British men of letters, like, you know, these hunters who had weapons we've never seen before, took out, like, 20 of my uh, pack, and just, like, it was nothing. And then we have a pretty cool fight sequence, because Sam... Dean and Davies get in there, and it was pretty cool. Like, honestly, they were, like, flipping and flying all over the place. Um, people getting tossed through stuff. I was like, this is actually a pretty cool sequence. That was another scene where we had a really funny stare uh, from Dean after everything was all said and done. And they stab the guy in the back so they're able to get his blood uh, for Claire. And Dean is finding the guy, and Davy shoots him in the back and kills him. And Dean's just on the ground looking up, like, stunned. That was, I think, the final super funny look that he gave in the episode. But fortunately, they were able to save Claire, because I was worried. I was like, okay, this would be really crazy if they end up doing this, because I was like, in the beginning, thinking of Garth and stuff, and then we get to the end, and I'm like, they actually did it. Because I was curious if she was just going to stay, because I was like, man, if she stays as a werewolf and she is able to control it, what is that going to do for Davies? Because he even mentions, like, you know, he was, he was talking about Ted, and he's like, I know a man who would kill you without a second thought, but... You know, my instincts haven't been too grand as of late. And I was like, I, I like this change for this character who has never really been in the field. They have their orders. It's, you know, go, kill, leave. And he changed it up a little. And I thought that was cool. I thought it was a nice dynamic for his character um, with him being, you know, one of the newer characters and finding out, especially in the other episode, that he actually had no experience, which personally uh, surprised me. Because I forgot about the line where it was like, uh, when he talked to the other guy, it's like, let me see your hands. He's like, oh, they're pretty and stuff because, I mean, he didn't do anything. I didn't think about that, you know, during that episode. But this was a good one. I like what they did with that. And ultimately, everything played out. And, um, you know, Claire was actually healed. And they talked about how she was, you know, like a walking miracle and stuff. So she goes off on her own. She's going to continue to hunt by herself because that's the life that she wants, even if that's not really what Jody wants for her. So she's made that decision to go off on her own. And Sam and Dean decide that they will give Davies another chance because he kind of made things right in the end. So they were like, you know, we're not cool, but we'll give you another chance. And I like that. And then the promo came out and I was like, oh, I guess he screwed that second chance because apparently, like, the headmistress, I swear, I feel like they're going to call her the headmistress. Maybe that's just me being 
a little stereotypical British people, but I just, I, some, I honestly assume they're going to call her the headmistress. And she's going to, but whoever, whatever they decide to call her, um, she's going to come in and I think it's going to get pretty forceful. And I don't know if she's going to let Sam and Dean slide on maybe some of those second chances because I, I really have to wonder how does it go from everything kind of being okay to they've got you know, Mick pointing a gun at the three of them, like Sam, Dean, and Mary. So it really makes me wonder exactly what mission they went on that kind of caused this rift between these groups, or if it was just revealed through dialogue, like, oh yeah, well, when you guys let people go, we go behind you and we clean up those idiotic mistakes you make. And I feel like it will almost come off just as harsh as that, maybe even harsher. And that's going to lead to that ultimate conflict, and it might happen a bit earlier than I would have expected, which I figured it would happen like really close to the season finale and maybe the men of letters, British obviously men of letters, would continue into the next season in a new regard, but it's really hard to say. It's a whole thing, so I don't know how they could possibly conclude it with them being like full-on rivals because the men of letters wouldn't just leave unless they were like, well, screw it, fine, we'll let, you know, it's, we don't care about the states, that's not where we're from, we'll just go back to Britain and just leave you guys to, you know, all get run over and killed, so... I don't know if they do that or not, because it's supposed to be the job of saving human lives, so would they be that petty just to Sam, Dean, and Mary and be like, fine, and would, you know, leave the entire, this entire side of the planet behind just for that, or, you know, would they do it, um, or, you know, would they just keep going and ignore the Winchesters, but ultimately we have to see what happens as far as things are concerned. In this episode, they're kind of cool. And it was definitely a funny episode and a really good episode. I think they did some good minor development. Um, fun episode, even though it was definitely a filler episode. Not much really happened outside of, you know, kind of the Mick Davies thing and his bit of development as a character. Which, considering the promo, I think it will be important to have had this episode because otherwise, without it, he just would have been, you know, the same character. There would have been no development. It just would have been, okay, I believe what she believes. And he wouldn't have had this good adventure. Plus, we wouldn't have had a pretty funny episode. I think it was this was just a really good funny episode. Um, still miscast. And it was kind of funny because I'm like, he's almost wearing, like, his jacket, uh, mixed jacket was, like, very close to, um, it, yeah, it was, like, it was beige. It wasn't exactly tan. It, it was just brighter. And I was like, and it wasn't exactly, you know, the same type of jacket. But I was like, man, this is way too close of a color for me to not think of Cass. And, you know, he's the third person there, of course. But... Still waiting to see more of Cass, and with the promo, it seems like we're going to get everybody. I hope we get Cass. We do see Crowley and Lucifer. They don't specifically show Cass, but I like to think if Crowley and Lucifer are going to show up, we got to see more Cass. He's been missing, you know, we've got like we got that cool little bit in the last episode, which was like two full scenes, maybe three. And so he's back in heaven, and we'll see what happens there. I actually thought he was going to be in the first scene, because when they start the episode and they're at the lights... I thought that was supposed to be heaven because that's like heaven is always like a bunch of office spaces. So when they first showed the lights, I was like, is this going to be heaven? And then it kept, it panned out super slow. And I was like, oh, this is not going to be heaven. It's going to be the office. And of course, it just ends up being uh, Sam and Dean. But still enjoyed the episode. Want to see more cats because I just feel like we've been missing them for too long. But this is a good episode for development with Mick. And I'm curious where they're going to take his character in next week's episode. But of course, would love to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below, let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and I want to know what you guys thought about the development of both uh, Mick and Claire in this episode. I think they did some good stuff with both of them. Um, I'd say for Mick, it was definitely much better. That was kind of the whole point of this episode, was really to change Mick from typical, you know, kind of tech style men of letters, where it's like, we go in, we do this, and then we leave, and we have our orders, and we do everything by the letter, regardless of how something could turn out, monster dies, period. So I think what they did with him was greater than what they did with Claire, where, you know, she wanted to hunt. And I feel like that's always been her character. Even the last time, it was like, it was very obvious. She wanted to be the one who haunted. Her sister, you know, uh, who I want to say her name is Amy, I can't really remember. Um, you know, they were the opposites. She always wanted to hunt, and that was just not the case. And Jody, of course, wants neither of her daughters to hunt. So... I was just like, yeah, I didn't feel like it was too much of a change. She did just have a good moment in this episode where she, you know, she wanted to die. She's like, I screwed up. Kill me. And she was like, I'm, I'd rather die than, you know, hurt the people I care about. So they certainly had some great moments. I just feel like as far as actual development, they just did way more uh, with Mick's character in this episode than they did with Claire's where she started as a hunter where she was rebelling and then 
she ended as a hunter, except she just kind of admitted it. She wasn't as rebel. I mean, she wasn't rebelling as much, but she still was leaving and not doing what Jody wanted. So it's kind of the same. She just admitted that she wasn't, you know, doing what she was expected to do. But I still like what they do with both characters. Like I said, all I think of every time I see Claire is like, man, I want to see those those sword wielding angels. But I can wait. I can wait and see when we get that later. But I think this is a good episode. Like I said, I want to know what you guys thought about the development of our two characters in this one. And of course, I want to know what you just thought about the episode in general. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.